the neighbor Russia must and then uh, establish a fair in war. So when you listen to what they have said before, not only about the Kosovo, but also about members of the NATO, Coming back to some of the issues already raised, I'm sorry to use it to support NATO members. Ukraine has had notable success in the battlefield in the more recent weeks. But it does seem that the more success Ukraine has on the battlefield, the more erratic, belligerent, and potentially dangerous Mr. Putin becomes. So, does this change the way you approach the situation? Does it make you more cautious? Or, in any way, this fact that the better Ukraine does in fighting Russian troops, the bigger the threat seems to be for it doesn't what change um, is what we have to do, Ukraine, and that is to support Ukraine. But at the same Ukraine. time, preventing escalation because if we by less sending a clear message to Moscow it will be about uh, the dangers of nuclear weapons. Ukraine will cease to exist as an independent sovereign nation, but it will also be dangerous for us. And it's not as if inaction is not a uh, risk. Uh, inaction is a great risk. Because that's the great the world where uh, Putin will see, see that, 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 uh, that, that with impunity he can use military much. force, invade a neighbor, and then uh, establish a sphere of influence. So when you listen to what he has said, not only about Ukraine, but also about uh, members of NATO, Eastern allies, uh, that will be a world that will be more dangerous for all of us. So, yes, we are faced with a, a, a dangerous uh, war in Ukraine. Uh, but it's not as if that war will not be dangerous anymore if we allow Putin to win. In many ways, then, it will at least increase the long-term risks for all of us. And that's the reason why we pay the cost of supporting Ukraine. And knowing that the cost, the price we have to pay, if we don't support them, most likely will be much higher. Um, uh, we are monitoring closely what Russia is doing. We haven't seen any changes in their nuclear posture. We are vigilant, uh, we are sharing information. And uh, we have conveyed very clearly to Russia that there will be severe consequences if they use uh, 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 nuclear uh, forces uh, against uh, Ukraine. We also have to realize that we speak about different types of escalation. One thing is escalation within Ukraine. We have conveyed a clear message on that. Um, then, of course, there's also the risk of escalation beyond Ukraine, involving all the NATO allies. Uh, we've also been very clear on that. NATO is not party to the conflict. 
we support Ukraine, but that doesn't make us part of the conflict. We support a sovereign nation in their sovereign right for self-defense. On top of that, we have also significantly increased our military presence in eastern part of the lines. We did so immediately after the invasion because we were, we were prepared. So that morning of the invasion, we activated all our defense plans from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea and started the additional deployment of additional troops to the eastern part of the lines to remove any room for miscalculation or misunderstanding in Moscow about our willingness, our readiness to protect every inch of NATO territory. And more troops in Eastern Party Alliance is sending that message. So uh, uh, NATO's aim, what we are doing, is to support Ukraine, but at the same time preventing escalation by sending a clear message to Moscow about uh, the dangers of nuclear rhetoric and the consequences the uh, use of nuclear weapons will have, and by demonstrating our readiness to defend and protect all allies by increasing uh, the presence of NATO troops and sea and air capabilities in the eastern part of the lands. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you.